Burr, it's cold this morning, and I think the flu is on my front doorstep. I think I'm going to get ready to be sick. I am Dave Riccio. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, and he is Matt Allen, the KTR car guy. And we are here to help you with your car every Saturday from 11 to noon right here on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. We are going to put you in the know when it comes to car stuff. We're here to help, so we hope you give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Road Map, top ways to increase your bill at the auto shop. That's going the wrong direction, by the way. Open phones and phone call pricing, is it valuable? I was raised always to get three prices. You don't want to take the first price you get. you got to get three prices. you got to get more than one. Phone call pricing for auto repair, is it worth it? I don't know, David. You know, we we have this challenge every single day, whether it's about a transmission or some complex repair or some simple repair. And I think the problem is, is it's not like going to Home Depot and buying a sheet of plywood or getting a gallon of milk at the store. It's there's so much subjectivity, and do you really end up cheaper or better, or or do you just cause yourself Problems, maybe. You may cause yourself problems. And I think the thing about auto repair is it's not a commodity. It's not like a gallon of gasoline. You get a gallon of gasoline here or there. It's the same difference or a sheet of plywood. It's a commodity. Now, auto repair, because, A, the the level of the technician that's working on the car. Is it the kid out of school? He may be good and fresh on technology, but he doesn't have the experience factor. So, you know, who's working on the car? So... Well, in what shop? But you, you know, Dave, you said it, and I've never heard it said this way. You said if we were all forced to charge the same price, then it would only come down to service and quality. Whoa! No one ever thinks about that. When we get the phone call, hey, how much to do this? I, you know, I have to say, well, you should be asking questions like, what is your better better business bureau record? Are your mechanics ASC certified? How long have you been in business? Yeah, There's two shops within a mile of me that are out of business that were in business two years ago. They're gone now. There is, I, th- I want to say there's anywhere between eight and 900 general repair auto mechanic shops in town. Does that sound about right to you? I'd say eight I, to I 900. 1,200 at one point. Well, you throw in the ago. specialty oh, shops. Yeah. You know, that, that upset number. Sure. Like muffler shops, transmission shop, general repair. There's, yeah, upholstery shop. There's all kinds of... One of the biggest changes in the industry in the last 10 years is everyone branching out of their specialty as well. So guys are doing a lot more stuff than they used to do, and I think it's just part of the economy tightening up. Well, there, it, yeah, in, in those are cases. That, that's a whole other subject, Dave. But, <laughs> but, you know, to the phone pricing thing, I'll use the transmission example because we had the car in our shop. And then the, the other day, and I'll also talk about another example from Holiday Moore. She called me, one of the news people here at KTR called me with a problem in her car. But the first one with the transmission deal we had the other day, I'm just going to make some numbers up except for the differential or the difference in price, the delta here. The guy says, well, you're $900 more for the transmission than X. I know who X was, but it's not like I said, go to the store and get a gallon of milk or go get milk. Don't define what a gallon of milk. Don't define the quantity. I need a transmission. Boy, there's a big difference. Huge. There's difference. a huge difference between a $2,000 transmission and a $3,000 transmission. There's more than just a $1,000 difference. Well, the way the way I describe that because that's a conversation that's ongoing at my shop is that if I charge you $10 for something, there's going to be $9 worth of stuff in it. Well, the next guy is cheaper because he's only charging you 6, but he's only giving you $3 worth of stuff. So he's making a lot more profit margin, but you're getting less quality. Well, that's like you said, honey, go to the store and get some milk. Go up, go to Acme because it's two dollars there, and uh, fries is four dollars. So you come back with the two dollar milk, and it's two quarts. You come back with a four dollar milk, and it's a gallon. Mm. I, my math, I should have said $3 milk. You saved a dollar. It's 25% less. You know, so you $3 for the milk, $4 for the milk, but you come back with a half gallon for 3 bucks, and you got a full gallon for $4. You spent less money, but you didn't get a better deal. That's well, the difference. Well, I don't want to say phone pricing is, you know, 
it, it is a battle that we fight in our business, but maybe we're looking at it wrong. And I think this is the way that phone pricing should be. There's, there's two types of phone pricing. There's a find a type of phone pricing where we know what is wrong with our car. My car is in an auto shop. They told me my water pump is bad. So therefore, I call around and get a price on a water pump. So that's we know what's wrong. Kinda. Then there's a type that's, that's half the story, though. Right, it is half the story. But then there's the type where we think we know what's wrong. Gosh, my transmission is slipping. So uh, therefore, I'm going to get a price on a transmission. Yeah, must need a transmission. Must need a transmission. Not. We don't even know that yet. So you could be setting yourself up for a relationship to start off wrong by going in. Tell you're, you're essentially telling them, "Hey, this is what I think I need." And we're pricing something that may not even be relative. Or you think you need an alternator, but really all you need is a wire repair and a fuse to that alternator. So that's that's where we jump ahead. And we, we all want easy, quick answers. This is what it is, black and white. How much does that cost? In an auto repair, unfortunately, it's just gray. There's so much subjectivity, and you have to deal in that arena. And then you have to hope you're working with a shop who has the ability to really do what's best in your interest based off conversations they had with you. In, yeah, in the experience. In the example with Holiday, she called me and said, man, I don't know what to do. I, uh, I, My husband's calling around for prices on a heater core. The truck has a bad heater core. In this one place, one place was $600, and the other place was $1,200. Why are they such a ripoff? Now, nobody the truck had never been to either one of these shops. Nobody had even seen the truck. This is just he knows it needs a heater core because there's green stuff all over the floor. How do you how do you determine that the one shop is a ripoff? Well, so as this conversation evolves, I ask, well, the one shop, you know, they I ask need a price on a heater core. So you maybe you got the price on a heater core and the labor for the heater core. But the next guy the heater core is just the symptom. If you have a leaking heater core, there's something mm. else. And he it's knows like, to remove the dash, you've got to you've got to disconnect the air conditioning, so you've got to evacuate and recharge the air conditioning. There's a whole other step the other guy didn't even price. Yeah. When you get there, he may say, oh, you know, I give you a price on a heater core and the labor to do it. But there's another component to that repair, and that happens all that's the just time. Like the, that's just like the $5 oil change coupon. It got you in the door. And then we can talk about the nobody, real price. Nobody advertises the... The thirty-five dollar door price on the oil change. The same thing is going to happen, you know, with with the phone shopping. Well, there is a value to phone shopping, and let me tell you what it is. If you're going to phone shop, this is the way you need to do it. Okay, your car's at XYZ Auto Shop, and they tell you, you know, you're going to need to spend six hundred dollars on a water pump and timing belt and whatever it may be, and um, you know, just need your okay to get the work done. You know what? Um, it's a big purchase. I need to talk to my wife. I need to make some phone calls. Make sure. That's what I'm looking for. So I call to another shop to get another price, which, again, you know, you're raised to get three prices. That's not a bad idea. I think the thing to do is when you call that shop and you say, I need a water pump, that shop already knows you're price shopping another shop. Yeah. We already know that. We've, we, we, have, we, we do 100 phone calls a day. We know what people are talking about. So I say just right off the bat, so, you know, my car is at XYZ Auto Shop, and I've been doing business over there, and they're, they're good people. I need to just want to check you know, they're saying about six hundred dollars for a water pump. Does that sound reasonable? What's your price? Well, yeah. Does does it sound right? And the thing that we always preach here, every weekend, we talk about the relationship. So as the conversation with Holiday went on, and we talked about the things and how the, that guy's not a ripoff. He's he's replacing the hoses. He's putting a new radiator cap on, or or doing whatever that the first guy didn't do. And I said, well, that's why we always preach about this relationship. And she says, oh, we have a relationship at Whitey's. Well, then why are you calling around for prices? Right. You know they're <laughs> going to do a good there. job. You yeah. know they're going to do us right yeah. for you. So, so when we come back, we've got Francis, Tom, and Stephen. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, the automotive therapist, here along with Matt Allen, the KTR car guy, and we are here to help you with your car. And we've got open lines at 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTAR. And for those of you, you who know me, you'll be surprised to see I am wearing pants today. <laughs> it is just that cold. <laughs> yeah, you are a short. It's because you're so hairy that, you know, that the, all the leg hair is like, like you know, you, you're wearing your own fur coat. You're <laughs> it is my, my mane of leg hair. <laughs> and you've got the beard going now, too, like lumberjack. I grew up, I couldn't stand facial hair. And you know what? Something happened. I just, I got tired of shaving. I am going lumberjack. I'm going to get some flannel, too, to go with it. <laughs> so anyway, up first this segment, we've got Francis. Looks like a 2010 Hyundai Sonata. Go ahead, Francis. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. 
Oh, yes, thank you. Um, I had an interesting thing happen, I think. Um, I went in and had a routine oil change, no problem, uh, very low mileage, you know, 4,000 miles or so. And a week later, well, I think we lost Francis on the... Uh... Looks like she cut out there for a second, maybe lost a cell phone connection. Francis, if you can call back in, we'll check the line here in a second and see if you came back. But, okay, well, we dropped off for a second. Let me try it again. Hang tight one second here. Hi. Fr Francis, we lost you for a second. I don't know what happened. Right. So you went in for your oil change. Yes. And uh, and then what happened when you got the car back? Or Hello? Francis? Well... Maybe not, Dave. Give us a, give us a shout back. Well, let's go ahead and go with Tom in Mesa. Looks like on a 2005 Toyota Highlander. Go ahead, Tom. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Go ahead, Tom. No, hold on, Dave. We got some issues here. Hold on a second. Now it's Tom. I'm I'm screwing up the phone here, Dave. I'm not I'm not doing this quite right. What you get for making a hairy leg comment? I know. Tom, are you there? Yeah, this is Tom. Can you uh, hear me? We can. Go for it. We're having some little little disconnect between my brain and my fingers to it's the telephone. It's a cold operator error. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got going on with your Highlander? I love the car. It's all wheel drive, and I take it up north uh, to pace in in the winter. Um, and I've been noticing that when I'm driving up a hill, it, it, when it, it wants to downshift um, because it needs power, it, it shifts really hard. In fact, I've had uh, friends spill their coffee uh, at times when its thing is, is downshifting. It, it's really hard, and I'm kind of at a loss. It runs fine in the valley. It works fine all the other time. It runs, it runs fine accelerating on the freeway, but when I'm heading to the north country um to do whatever it it shifts hard on the hills and I'm, I'm worried i won't get there but i always get there but it's shifting very very hard you're gonna get lucky today because a guy had to pay me a lot of money to figure this out at my shop <laughs> I was gonna say, that sounds reminiscent of something we were a highlander about. that i had it was uh it was all-wheel drive which was a problem because we couldn't run it on a diner to prove out the problem that this guy was having but every time you'd go up north you know that you're going uphill and all of a sudden thing decides to downshift and it downshifts like a like a brick uh and he didn't know what to do with it took him to the shop when you can't duplicate it the shop doesn't know what to do so uh someone had already told him he needed a new transmission if that's what was happening and we said well we're gonna have to feel it and so what we did was we hooked up a pressure gauge and a scanner, and I sent two mechanics. Uh, and we went to the first turnoff past uh, the Four Peaks, or the first hill. Beeline Highway, or by, by the lake. And what we had to do is go up that hill, and we felt it, and look at the pressure gauge, and come back up the other side, and back and forth, and back and forth, till we determined it. And what it ended up being was a worn-out pressure regulator valve in the valve body. It's a U151 transmission. is the transmission that's in there. So what he needed was a valve body. But it was hard to diagnose because we had to go do what he was doing in order to make it happen. In, in the first call was, let's go put it on a dyno, and then we can figure it out. But it's all-wheel drive. Most dynos are not all-wheel drive. I said, well, let's take off the rear drive shaft, and maybe we can do it that way. But we can't. As soon as you pull the rear drive shaft, the computer it's won't let it run. freaking out. But that's a pr another example, Dave, of phone shopping or, or, or shopping because you think you know what the problem is. I need a transmission. If, you if someone would have gone to a different transmission shop and – because they, oh, we sell transmissions. You need a transmission. Okay. You bet. We'll sell you one. Here you go. Well, that would have fixed the problem because they would have got the valve body. Correct. <laughs> the valve body was in the new transmission. But you could fix that. That Toyota is, is a very cheap fix. And and that's that's a huge change in our business. Transmissions used to cost, I mean, I remember the Turbo 350 for $350. I don't remember that. I heard about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but a transmission used to be not that expensive. But now you're talking about a thirty dollars or $40,000 vehicle that came with two major components, one the engine, one the transmission, and now they cost $3,000, 4000 $5,000. So now we look at these fixes more often, and valve bodies have become a tremendous issue in our business. That's so, what directs the fluid to go where it needs to do to make the hydraulic pressure to make things exactly. happen. Exactly. It's a hydraulic brain of the transmission, and because they've made them for creature comfort to shift smooth, they wore out on a regular basis. So, so what do we say? We try Francis again, Dave? Go ahead, we'll Francis. Go Let's see if you're there. Hello. Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. We'll see if I, I think, I don't know what happened there, but the floor is yours, Francis. All right, oh, Francis, you're more than welcome to send us an email at bumper to bumper radio dot com. There's a contact link there. 
Uh, it comes right into Matt and Mai's email. So we're going to try and sneak in. Looks like Stephen. Go ahead, Stephen. You are on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, hi, guys. Um, yeah, I have a Chevy uh, moving a 98, and it's a coolant question, basically. my uh, I keep going through a gallon of coolant once a month, and it, it sucks all my coolant as fast as it can go, basically, and I don't know where it's going. My I checked my engine um, oil, and it's light brown in color. So is that normal? Is that... Well, the, could it be could the coolant be seeping into the engine oil? It could be doing a cu- it could be going a couple places. One I always think of if it's disappearing, it could be going into the transmission cooler and into the radiator. That's or I mean into the transmission that happens. Uh, okay. The, the other place it could be going is into the combustion chamber. So it's not going to make it into the oil. So you're not going to see anything. It's just going out the tailpipe in a vapor. Uh, and then the other one would be... Well, it could be in the oil. That, that's uh, not uncommon on that car to have the intake manifold gas heat leaking. But you're not seeing anything dripping on the ground, I'm assuming, right? No, I'm not. And Nothing that's the anywhere. most weirdest thing. Uh, you know, if, if, I, like, I don't have a check engine light. All I have is a coolant light, and it keeps coming on, you know, three, four times a month. And <laughs> I can't f- seem to figure it out. Well, when you say the oil is right, light brown, maybe the easiest thing might do to go get it, just get an oil change. If you're due for an oil change or goes to a shop and say, can you check my oil? Does it look like there's anything in the oil? Do I need to, you know, does this need to be changed? What's, what, what do you think? Do you see anything? You know, I've been getting a lot more show emails lately where people are asking about, hey, I'm thinking about getting rid of my Corolla and going to a hybrid car. And my response sometimes is, until your car, you got a car now that gets 30 miles to the gallon, you're going to go to 45 miles to the gallon, but you're going to spend $28,000 to get there. Is it worth it? So we can talk about that more shows to come. We've got open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are here to help you with the car. Every Saturday from 11 to noon on 92.3 KTAR. And you may have heard Jill earlier saying the top three things you don't want to do with your auto mechanic, and me earlier, the top three ways to raise your bill. (laughs) And uh, we borrowed these from uh, the patriarchs of Car Talk Radio, Click and Clack, uh, and they had a top ten list, and we put it up on our, our Facebook page. Well, and first so you know, you can find our Facebook page at Facebook, or you can go to BumperToBumperRadio.com, and that's a place where Dave and I are always available for questions, comments on the show, if you have a topic that you want to talk about. But this top ten list, which we've broke down to three, is on our Facebook page. Well, we're going to go with the three highlights. Number one way to increase your bill at the auto shop, and when I say increase your bill, it, it, because it makes it more work. And at some point, labor is and time is part of our is part of our deal. And that's withholding information uh, from the auto repair shop or the guy at the counter. Some people try and steer us, and we know they're steering us. Um, go ahead and tell them everything, and you're more than welcome just to just to let it all out. And then we'll decide which information we need and which we don't. But we'll, we'll take it all. It's like going to the doctor. You got to tell them the whole the whole nine yards. You, you know, if you had surgery last year, they need to know that. Yeah, don't leave that off because that that could be you know that could yeah. be part of the issue. So, number one, withholding information from the auto shop. Number two, and this is a this is one that people kind of assume auto repair is easy. <laughs> auto repair is not easy. I don't care it's who. It's not. You, My neighbor does it all the time. What are you talking about? You may replace your air filter, but when there's a problem, it's not easy. Or you have a relatively routine job, and you're doing the job, and all of a sudden you go to take a bolt out, and the bolt snaps off. Well, now the bolt's got to be drilled out. The hole's got to be tapped. That just added hours to the project. and not to mention all the tools you need. and the- All the tools you need to do it. So the, other, the next one is realistic expectations. You've got to have realistic expectations. This is auto repair. It's not easy. Um, in an auto shop, there's a lot of things going on. Phones ringing, tow trucks showing up, all that stuff. And we're trying to help everybody as best as possible. But you having a realistic expectation when you come in that stuff happens and stuff comes up. And we can't get upset about it. Uh, we just have to we have to roll with the punches a little bit with auto repair. So that would be my number two. And I'll let you have number three. Number three, blaming your mechanic for other problems. That's one of my favorites. We call that the ever since. Oh, ever the gentleman's since. name is Everett Since. Yeah. You. Well, I don't know about Everett. Yeah, but ever since. Ever since you did this, it does that. 
I, yeah. Well, it's like we'll fix it. We'll fix an exhaust leak that's really noisy, and we fix that, and all of a sudden that's fixed, and now you've got another noise. Yeah, now you can hear that other, <laughs> that other deal. You know, so it or, does. Or whatever. It, it can happen that ever since we worked on a car, that something else is an issue. But when you come back. Give the shop the benefit of the doubt. That's the best way to have a relationship with somebody. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, again, there's a lot of good people in the business doing good work, and if they're reasonable, they want you happy because they want your word of mouth. Yeah. That's good. important to that, us. That's why we're there. We want more of that business, so we always want to do make right. you happy. Well, up for this segment, we're going to go with line one because <laughs> that's what's on the screen. Yeah, go ahead, line one. You are on Bumper to Bumper Radio. I think that's Jason. Yep. Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? Uh, we're doing all right. We got this phone beat this segment, I think. What can we help cool. you with? Uh, 2004 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD uh, with a gasser in, engine in it. Uh, came out to the shop the other day, and I've got a little drip underneath the truck coming from the power steering fluid, uh, power steering reservoir, actually dripping out of the cap. So when I went to remove the cap, it seemed like it was under pressure. I got uh, probably a four-inch circle underneath the truck from where it was just dripping slowly and running down the back of the reservoir box and dripping onto, you know, other suspension components. Pulled the cap off, and I probably got a, oh, goodness, uh, a quarter of a quart of fluid out of there, Smokes. you know, four or five ounces, Is and it- uh, put the cap back on, and as soon as I started the truck up, no power steering, no power brakes. So after running the car for a little bit, revving the engine up, the uh, pump started making the wine, sucked the fluid down in. I started getting power steering back, but now, of course, the, the fluid's low. So my question is, is there a – it's got a hydro boost system on it. Is there an anti-drain back valve or a one-way valve going from that hydro boost down to the power steering reservoir? I think or I remember – I remember on the Hondas, they had a screen in the bottom of that reservoir that was up on the fender, and sometimes that screen would get restrictive and starve the pump. Well, that happens a lot. A, a lot of Toyotas and Lexus, but I don't – that reservoir and that pump, I'm trying just trying to close my eyes and picture it. That it's the can and the pump is all one assembly. It's not two separate. You know, it doesn't have a reservoir. That's and, correct. And a pump. Located at the bottom of the engine. Yeah, uh, you know, that's a strange one. I mean, I I've never heard of of that. I've never I've never seen that. I think what you need to do now that you've had the the fluid vomit out of there, it's all puked out. <laughs> get, right. Get good quality transmission fluid, or not transmission fluid, power steering fluid, or whatever it calls for, and just slowly add it and just get that thing adjusted right. Did you say you had it at a shop, or you came out from picking it up? I mean, did you have an oil change? No, it's or... never been in a shop. The, the truck sits a lot, so the truck had been sitting for about two weeks at this time, but it's not uncommon for this truck. I drive it for you know to the dunes or on the weekends, and sometimes it sits for a couple months at a time. Well, the basic so question the first is... Time Okay. No, I said the biggest question is why aren't you at the dunes? <laughs> I was going President's Day. I'm getting ready for it. Okay. Well, I'm I, working on the Rhino, and I see a leak out of the truck. You can't go to the dunes with a leaky power steering well, cap. I think you need nope. to you need to get it cleaned off, get it filled, and you know work it today throughout the day. Drive it. Make sure you get that level adjusted, and then watch it and see what happens. Maybe check tomorrow morning. Okay. To see if it does anything, and then you know if there's no leaks or anything, don't mess with it. Make sure that you're checking it under the same conditions again. So get it warmed back up, drive around the block, let it run for 10 minutes. We have to do to make sure that we're comparing apples and apples. When I, we, when I we would start comparison. with that. And he was asking specifically, is there a, some sort of valve or check valve in there that would keep make that happen? And I don't know enough about that pump to know. Yeah, and I don't know either. If you want to send us an email, go to our bumper to bumper com. There's a contact link there. Send us an email. If we, if we can come up with something that we think will help you, we'll definitely send you some information. And then if you would, let us know what you come up with. When it, if, if you come up with a fix, it would be nice to yeah, hear about sure. it. Yeah, for sure. And from time to time when people send us emails, we'll take a t- we have a problem database that we go through, and we'll see if there's anything obvious that might jump out at us. So when you send us emails, we will run it by that database to see if there's an issue with that. So we're going to go with Jordan. Uh, go ahead, Jordan. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Nope. Uh, um, I've got an 04 Acura MDX. And um, the controls on the steering wheel, the the cruise control and the radio controls and the horn, kind of just one by one started going out over a period of about two weeks. And uh, my cousin's a mechanic. He was in another state, though. I talked to him, and he thought, it, you know, just off the top of his head, he thought it might be a clock spring. But I just wanted to know if you all had any idea of what could have caused that and how to fix it. Uh, I'm going to answer this one because this one's easy enough. I can answer it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll leave you the easy ones, Dave. That's <laughs> I get all the gravy. Uh, definitely clock spring is what's going on. And it's just a, it's just the steering wheel. There's a wire in there that's connected to the center and then a wire that's connected to the, to the wheel in a sense. And it gets wrapped around quite a bit. So when you turn the wheel, it still stays connected. It looks like a clock spring. You know, it's a flat ribbon. Right. You know, wound up. And there might be seven, nine wires in there. There might be just be a couple wires, and they're multitasking over those wires. You have one broken wire, but that wire was maybe be sending four or five different pieces of, inf- of information. So I would totally agree. Clock spring is where I'd be going. And most likely not a do-it-yourselfer job. No, it's somewhere a, the steering wheel's got to come apart. You maybe be airbag the in airbags, there. Airbags, yeah. Maybe not worth it. So clock spring is it, Jordan. Thanks so much for the call. Thanks, Jordan. We're going to take James. James, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. What can we help you with today? Yes. I have an 07 Chevy Malibu. Okay. And some days you you drive it and it drives fine. Some some days you get in it and try to drive and the engine just revs. It doesn't move. How often do you drive this vehicle? Well, it's driven every day. Every day. And some days it just doesn't want to... Now, when you say it doesn't move, the engine the engine does rev up. It just doesn't go anywhere. Like, wing. Yep. Okay. That's right. How many miles on this on this Malibu? Uh, it, uh, let's see. Just barely. I went out of warranty on the 31st of December. So how many miles is that? I don't remember how many miles on it right offhand. Uh, so roughly, you think it's 07, so we think this thing has 50,000 miles on it? Yes. Um, when it finally does go, what do you got to do to make it go? Well, just uh, let it sit for a little bit and get back in it and drive, and it drives fine. Sit in it run with it running? No, just turn the key off, let it set, come back out, start it back up, and, hmm. and I'm going to tell you what the dealer said. Okay, it go belongs ahead. To my, belongs to my girlfriend, actually. Okay. And uh, the dealer said there's nothing wrong with it. They kept taking, she kept taking it into the dealer, and the dealer said nothing wrong with it. Well, did they now, say no, they said nothing's wrong with it, or they can't find they can't duplicate the problem? No, nope, no codes, no, no nothing. Now it uh, did it in the middle of traffic, and they said, "Oh, the it shot, the transmission shot." No code still, but the transmission shot. Well, okay. I don't think the absence of having a, of a code, it means the transmission is shot or not shot. You can very well have a transmission that's, quote, shot, and there's still no code set. That I, I don't like the term shot. Tell me what's wrong with it Do, on the, in that case. I mean, all the mechanics of that transmission can't be just, quote, shot and thrown out in one spot. Something is controlling that transmission and telling it what to do. Well, and I'm not sure which transmission. There's 4T40s real common or 4T65. The cold thing, I mean, we kind of were down one path. It was a cold issue, starting it up, and then it was a driving and traffic issue. So nothing jumped out in my mind. Uh, I know the 4T65s, they have an input seal that likes to cut and cause issues when they're cold or hot. It kind of goes back and forth. But uh, I think some more diagnostic work needs to be done on that. This needs uh, a transmission shop or someone very experienced that can actually duplicate the problem and not be under pressure. James, I think you're going to have to be without this car for just a couple of days. You just need to plan and get the pressure off the shop that you choose. Take your time. Here's my car for two or three days. I need you to figure it out and tell me. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and we are here helping with your car. I seem a little confused this morning. You are. I think we're all a little confused. The cold weather, our brains haven't thawed out yet. You know, the music's loud. I'm liking my the tunes here, and uh, the, fo- the phones are a little goofy. You're getting sick. Your truck has seat warmers. It does. Mine does not. I don't get that kind of stuff. A little disappointed though. You know, my Chevy truck had seat warmers on your butt and your back, so it was it was like therapeutic too to drive. And now this one just cooks your butt a little bit. But I like the heated steering wheel. I don't have one, but I'd like to have one. <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep my fingers nice and toasty. Well, let's go with Lynn and Payson on a 2004 Ford Focus. Go ahead, Lynn. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, I don't have anything heating up in the car right now. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Listen, I have a 2004 Ford Focus. And I have the hazard light. This car cuts out and and totally sometimes stalls. 
and the, haz- the, the hazard light, there's a light next to the hazard light. That light goes on, and then when it kicks back in, the light goes off. Uh, sometimes the car is totally stalled, but it'll start right back up. It sounds like something fuel, and then sometimes it sounds like my transmission is falling. So I am just, I have no idea where to go with it. We put a fuel filter in. I've had so many different comments on what it possibly could be, and I'm totally lost and fearful to take it into a mechanic. So this hasn't been to a mechanic at all? No. Okay, and so it's just kind of what your neighbor thinks or son or whatever. Right. You're talking about the lights coming on. Is there Are there any lights lit up or illuminated on the dash while the car is driving, or do they only come on when it stalls? Uh, no, it only comes on when it stalls, and it has been... Um, uh, there's no, you know, when they check it out, uh, it's been like at AutoZone, and, and when they put the codes on it, nothing comes up on the codes either. Right. Okay. Well, you really need to, I don't, I don't know what your fear is of going to a mechanic, but you need to look and see if you can find somebody up there in Payson. We don't have a bumper-to-bumper shop in Payson, but we would certainly be willing to look. If you want to go to bumpertobumperradio.com and send us an email, I know there's a good shop in Payson. There has to be. There's a, you can check, the, search the Automotive Service Association maybe, and that would be a good place to, to find a referral. Check your Better Business Bureau records. But take some time and take some notes and write down what's happening, what the frequency is, and take them some good information. And I don't think it will be a big deal for a shop to find. It. Nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, and I think that there, there should be a fear also of replacing a bunch of parts that we don't need just by trying this or trying that, you know, because we started with a fuel filter because that's fairly inexpensive, but what are the next pieces that we replace, you know, before we actually get to the problem? So I think uh, starting with a good shop, you know, will reduce some of the fear. There's a lot of good people in the automotive business, a good majority of them. Yeah. So I, I, I think that will help lower your fear. Yeah, nothing to be nothing to be uh, afraid about at all. Just talk and have good open communication. And you know, Dave, the other thing that we see sometimes is someone's trying to fix their car and they do X and Y. Maybe that didn't work, so they try this other thing, and they do this other thing and they didn't do it right. Mm. So now we come in, create we, more problems, and we create more problems, and, or we fix what you came in for. But now we've got this other goofy problem. And you're like, that wasn't there before, <laughs> and then we find out that you caused, you created a different problem by just not having the skill set or using the right tools or parts or whatever, and you you change the game again. And honestly, so. our business has changed. There's fewer and fewer projects that you can do yourself, and it's you know we wish you could do them yourself, but with you need more computers, more test tools. There's more going into fixing cars anymore, and it's less the shade tree mechanic is. There's less opportunity for that. So, Lynn, we really appreciate the phone call. Let's go with Charles. Uh, go ahead, Charles. You are on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, how you doing? Um, I appreciate you letting me talk real quick. Hey, um, you had two callers earlier. One had a hard shift and one had an antifreeze. And um, you have um, a throttle pos- throttle body sensor or positioner. I had a Nissan truck that had a problem like that. It would shift down and up and down and up and down. And one of the wires was actually coming loose out of that. That was my first thing I wanted to say. As far as the um, coolant leak, there's a couple places can do oil analysis on the oil and see if there's coolant in there. And if they if it's internal, if it's external, they could probably put dye in it and use a black light. And then the last thing I want to say is I noticed a lot of people have the radios on when they're driving, and you can't. When you turn your radio down, sometimes you find a lot of stuff that you never hear. <laughs> yeah, that could be right. Going wrong. That's well, why I leave my so, wife at home when I go drive the car because I need to hear stuff with the car. <laughs> I'm teasing, <laughs> honey. I really day. am. <laughs> you're, 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 you stepped in it now. <laughs> well, you know, we joke around. There's a minor noise or something like that, and people say, "Well, gosh, is it worth fixing?" Or what should I do? Just turn the radio up a little bit. Well, here's a, you're right. <laughs> you're right. The noise go away. Here's another thing, and this happens to me all the time. Whenever I jump in someone's car to go for a drive, man, I just I can't help but hear the noise because I'm a technician. That's what I do, and they don't hear the noise because it got gradually worse over time. And the one I refer to is like differential bearings or a a carrier bearing on a drive shaft. You know, it starts and it gets a little worse, a little worse, a little worse. Have someone else drive your car from time to time. You'd be amazed what they find. It doesn't have to be a technician. It could just be your, your friend down the street. Or you go drive a rental car and realize how smooth and quiet that is because it's brand new. Then you go jump in your car and you're like, holy mackerel, what the, what? I got to get this looked at. We did a transmission repair for a guy, and uh, 
we did the repair and it was great. And we drove it and we said, well, the transmission works good. And we came in on a tow truck, but we heard a, a really loud noise coming from a bearing. It was a differential bearing. And we said, hey, you know, transmission's fixed, but I don't even think you're aware of this, but you've got some serious noise in this vehicle. Really? Well, you know, I think that's one thing, too, that are, are one of many things that people don't understand the time involved in the repair. We're going to go on a test drive. Next, let me take your car to the shop, write down the mileage, and then see or look at your work order. Did, have this, did, did they drive it a mile? Did they do a brake job or a timing belt? You know, you did a service, and they only drove the car around the block? We have a six-mile – we have we have like some th- two or three different – Three different prescribed text drive routes. We know if tech goes MIA, he's on one of these routes. Six mile drive. We have a, a it's right turns, it's left turns, it's bumps. That's time, but there is so much information that can be gathered just test driving the car before you work on it and after you work on it. You've got to the technicians that are working on these cars have got to be test driving them. Well, they're drivability problems, and a lot of people want to diagnose them in the bay, but drive the car there's so much more going on and you're looking for technicians drive the car i get it after my guys for not driving them enough i know if you went for a three mile drive and you quite don't have the answer go take it for a five mile drive take it for a 10 mile drive i never have a problem with a technician driving a car so we're glad you could share your saturday with us we hope we're lowering your anxieties when it comes to auto repair to start a relationship with a great auto repair shop bumper to bumper radio.com where you're there be sure to like us on facebook Thanks, Peter, for working with the phones. He is Matt Allen, the KTR Car Guy, and I am Dave Riccio, the Automotive Therapist, and we will be back next week. Remember, never to text and drive.